Good afternoon. Uh, my name is Jose Aguto, and I'm the Associate Director of the Catholic Climate Covenant, and blessed to be able to welcome you to the first webinar of the Catholic Climate Project. Um, and before we get started, um, please join me in prayer. Um, it's a prayer from Interfaith Power and Light um, called the Interfaith Climate Prayer. So we start uh, with a moment of silence remembering that God is always in our presence. In the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, amen. We hold the earth. We hold brothers and sisters who suffer from storms and droughts intensified by climate change. We hold all species that suffer. We hold world leaders delegated to make decisions for life. We pray that the web of life may be mended through courageous actions to limit carbon emissions. We pray for right actions for adaptation and mitigation to help our already suffering earth community. We pray that love and wisdom might inspire my actions and our actions as communities so that we may with integrity look into the eyes of brothers and sisters and all beings and truthfully say we are doing our part to care for them and the future of the children may love transform us and our world with new steps towards life amen in the name of the father and the son and the holy spirit amen before we begin we begin with our presentations a few housekeeping orders items um, first, the video will be recorded and we will be sending a link of the recording to you and all other registrants in the next couple of days. There will also be a question and answer session after all presentations. You may submit your questions by writing them in the question on the right side panel of your screen. You may wish to indicate who the question is directed to when you submit the question. If you have any audio issues, it's most likely due to your Wi-Fi connection. You can try connecting by phone for better audio. Uh, please go to the webinar. Go to webinar gives you the option to switch to the phone. Just click on the audio tab in the control box and it will give you directions for using your phone for audio. Um, so to begin, I'm pleased to introduce Nick Stein who will be our moderator today. Nick currently serves as the Young Adult Ministry Leader for the Sisters of Bon Secours, based in Marriottsville, Maryland. He most recently served as Director of Religious Education at the Cathedral of the Sacred Heart in Richmond, Virginia. He has spent his career serving the church and especially young adults in a variety of settings, including the University of Southern California, Boston College, Virginia Commonwealth University, and Boston, Boston College High School. And Nick, please take it away. Thank you. Thanks so much, Jose. Uh, very happy to be with all of you today and all of you that will be watching the recorded version of this at a later time. I'm happy to first introduce our panelists today who will be leading us through some short presentations before we get to all of your questions and are able to answer them. Uh, I am um, happy to introduce, though he's not here, and I'll be filling in uh, very briefly for him, Paul Jarzembowski, who is the coordinator of youth and young adult ministry at the United States Conference of Catholic Bishops. Uh, he was called away unexpectedly today, so we uh, will miss his presence, but we have his wisdom um, in the form of presentations, and I'll do my best to pinch hit for him today, but he's an, an integral part of this climate project. So, and then we also have Kayla Jacobs, who is the Director of Programs for Laudato Si Ministries of the Diocese of Joliet in the, in the Chicagoland area. And Lauren DeSmit, who serves as the Program Coordinator for Bon Secours Young Adults uh, and is the co-chair of this Catholic Climate Project. And she resides in San Diego, California. So we're happy to have them today. Uh, this is very much a young adult-led initiative. Uh, and as you can see by our presenters today, uh, that is the case. So uh, I'm going to turn it over to Lauren here first, who's going to lead us through some of the uh, 
mission and vision and uh, big picture parts of what we are doing with the Catholic Climate Project. And uh, we don't have Lauren's uh, video, but we will be able to listen to Lauren. Um, so Lauren, you there? Yes, I am. Okay. Thank you so much, Nick. Hello, everyone. Um, I'd first like to thank each of you for taking the time to join us. We're hoping that today is informational and inspiring. I mean, we're excited to share this moment with you all. We're excited to share our hopes. And by the end of this webinar, share ways that you each can get involved. I'm gonna see if my slide works. There, oh, there we go. So five years ago, Pope Francis wrote a document in which he stated, um, this wonderful quote in front of us. Um, and we are so thankful um, for this document and for his wisdom shared because since then, Catholics in the United States, especially youth and young adults, have increasingly embraced the care for creation, taking action to address climate change. We hope to build upon that foundation laid by Pope Francis and other environmental activists over the last five years um, by this initiative and through the Catholic Climate Project. I don't think my controls are working. There we go, wonderful. So during the season of creation, our hope is to engage and collaborate in a diverse array of activities in which Caleb will talk about later in the webinar. But we seek to address this growing need and empower young adults to take action within the, the intergenerational church. We're working to provide opportunities, initiatives, and programs to elevate and unify this call across the US Catholic community. Through this campaign, we hope to inspire and support local events, to educate on ways to be advocates, and to create avenues for young adults to get more involved. A moment led by Catholic young adults and youth, our goal is to unify our voices and to cultivate change. We're joined um, on today's webinar by Catholic dioceses, parishes, schools, universities, religious orders, and other institutions to provide and support an array of activities. We seek to unify these efforts under the name the Catholic Climate Project, and we're grounded in our Catholic faith. We are launching the Catholic Climate Project in alignment with the 50th anniversary of Earth Day, and the fifth anniversary of Pope Francis's encyclical, Laudato Si. This is an exciting opportunity and we're eager to invite you to join us um, in, in embracing care for our common home. And we ask that um, your help, um, we ask for your help to address climate change. We also acknowledge the ambitious goal ahead of us um, and all of those needed to make it happen. So in a few minutes, we're gonna let Nick share Paul's wisdom um, of why this really needs to be an intergenerational partnership and why there's a need for collaboration. And then we will close with Kayla sharing resources and opportunities for your involvement. So we thank you again so much for taking this first step and getting to know more about the Catholic Climate Project. We thank you for your eagerness to be involved. Um, and we look forward to any involvement um, that you may be interested in or whatever way you feel called. Um, but if you have questions in regards to kind of our vision, goals, um, or purpose, feel free to add those into the comment section um, and we'll, we'll address more questions towards the end. But um, thank you, first and foremost, thank you all each for being here today. Great, thanks Lauren. Uh, so I just want to uh, have this next opportunity to share what Paul would have shared. Uh, which is around why this is so important to engage uh, youth and young adults in this mission, right? Uh, this, this is a mission to immobilize the whole Catholic population in the United States around these issues of Laudato Si, um, around uh, Catholic climate action or around climate action. Uh, but this came from and where this, you know, originated was with young adults through the Creighton Conference that was held last summer. And we wanted to make sure that those uh, youth and young adult voices are really leading this effort. 
for uh, one, there's lots of different audiences that are involved today in this webinar, and there are lots of different collaborating partners uh, that are part of this process as well. Um, but a big key part of that is making sure that, uh, that the communities of uh, activists around climate um, issues and care for creation are being joined together with uh, activists for uh, youth and young adult ministries. And one of the things we want to look at here is how Pope Francis has framed this, both not only from Laudato Si, but he also has framed a lot of these issues uh, as a synodal walking together journey uh, from Christus Vivit, Christ is Alive, which is the post-synodal apostolic exhortation that he released last year, uh, um, last spring, actually, following the synod on young people, the faith, and vocational discernment. And so if I could have the next slide here, one of the things that we want to to look at um, is how Pope Francis frames this and why it's so important to engage. If you are a young person watching this, a lot of this is for you. It's written in uh, directly to you from Pope Francis of why it's important that you engage in this issue. But it's also important for people who minister with youth and young adults to understand where this is rooted. The world has never benefited, nor will it ever benefit from a rupture between generations. And this what we find is that there are lots of uh, people who would identify as a part of an older generation who are working on these issues, and there are lots of people who identify as part of a younger generation who are working on these issues. We want to make sure that as a Catholic community, we're working on the issues together, and that's really critical to the success of this Catholic climate project. When intergenerational relationships exist, a collective memory is present in communities as each generation takes up the teachings of its predecessors and in turn bequeaths a legacy to its successors. And one of the legacies that we want to bequeath to all of the successors, whether we are a young person right now or an older person right now, is a, a better planet for future generations um, to live on. The next slide, please. And Pope Francis and the Synod Fathers very much recognize that nature holds a special attraction for many adolescents and young people who recognize our need to care for the environment, such is the case with campaigns to improve the environment. And that we've seen those campaigns on a global scale now for years. And we want to make sure that the Catholic community is mobilizing as much as possible as a part of those campaigns to improve the environment. Uh, and we'll look at that in the next slide as well. Okay, so young people, you're the ones who hold the key to the future. Um, we have to make sure that uh, you and all of us are fighting apathy to offer a Christian response to the social and political troubles emerging uh, in different parts of the world, or as the climate is, climate crisis is, it's the whole world. And the Holy Father is asking all of us, but especially young people, to build the future, to work for a better world. And so please do not be bystanders. Uh, and what we also have talking to those who minister in parishes and in dioceses to young people, do not let your young people be bystanders. Encourage them to get involved, to work for a better world through this Catholic Climate Project. Uh, and so that's a critical piece of what we're doing here. Have the next slide. Don't stand aloof, but immerse yourselves in the reality of life as Jesus did. Above all, in one way or another, fight for the common good, serve the poor, be protagonists of the revolution of charity and service. Protagonistas is the Spanish word here um, in Christus Vivit, and it's a critical piece of how we are going about this project. The process of this project is critical for understanding what we're doing, and that is we are, we are following the lead of the protagonists of the young people themselves to make sure that they are out in front planning the activities and uh, organizing the activities and being the heart and soul of what's going on here. Um, and so we want to, this to not only be, uh, you know, a, an efficient project and a, um, a big project, but we wanted to make sure that this really is being led by young people as the protagonists of this project. Let's go ahead and go to the next slide. 
And that's why these collaborating organizations are so important. The, we thank the Catholic Climate Covenant for being the convener of this project, uh, but they are working and have uh, worked from the beginning of this as a very collaborative organization with the Archdiocese of Washington, with the Association of United States Catholic Priests, with the California Catholic Conference, with the Catholic Association of Diocesan Ecumenical and Interreligious Officers. Uh, and then there's a whole other list on the next slide as well, uh, which will include the Diocese of Joliet, the Global Catholic Climate Movement, the Laudato Si' Generation, uh, bon Secours Young Adults, the Sisters of Mercy, and the Bishop's Conference itself, especially through the Office of Youth and Young Adult Ministries in the Secretariat of Lady, Marriage, Family, Life, and Youth. So if we journey together on this, young and old, we can learn from each other, we can warm hearts, we can inspire minds, and we can lend new strength to our hands. But we have to do this together. We have to do this intergenerationally. We have to walk together in a synodal way, in a collaborative way with each other to really make sure that our Catholic voice is being mobilized uh, to the greatest extent that we can over this year of 2020. We're gonna hear from Kayla next about very specific ways that we can uh, make this happen in concrete situations, uh, in her case, in a diocese, uh, but we're gonna make sure that you have some ideas of what are we doing here in terms of putting this into action over the next few months. So Kayla. Okay, thanks, Nick. Um, yeah, so I'm just gonna run you through uh, the process and how we, uh, in our diocese at least, um, decides what we do and how we do things. So it's the see, judge, act, celebrate, and repeat process. Then I'm gonna give some examples of what we're planning to do here in the Diocese of Joliet, just to kind of show you what it's gonna look like on the local level. Uh, and then I'll run us through some other possibilities. Um, and then we'll go to next steps and then the Q&A portion of the webinar. Let's see if my slides work. Um, see, so I'm sure a lot of you have heard of this process of seeing, judging, acting, celebrating, and repeating. Uh, oftentimes, a lot of people focus just on the see, judge, act portion, but uh, here in the Diocese of Joliet, we also really like to celebrate and uh, then repeat the process and, you know, like build off of the, you know, what we learn throughout the process. Um, yeah, so. First step is seeing, and I think we've all have done that over the past five years since La Data C has come out. We've seen a lot of excitement around the encyclical, new movements being built. Um, that leads us to where we are right now at this like critical moment in 2020 uh, when we celebrate the uh, 50th anniversary of Earth Day and the five year anniversary of La Data C. And so now is the time for us to judge as we're leading up to April when all of these events will start happening. Um, and so I think we're really blessed with timing because uh, the Lenten season is coming up. So we can use this upcoming Lent to really uh, evaluate uh, and prepare for what we're gonna do in April and May. Uh, and then it's time to act. So um, we'll go through that and I'll tell you what we're gonna do here, but that will be in April and May. And then celebrating, I'm sure we'll be celebrating that whole time, but uh, really uh, celebrating the fact that uh, La Delta Sea was released five years ago and it's an amazing encyclical that's been such an inspiration and guiding light for us. Um, so it's something to be celebrated. So at the end of May and the anniversary. And then of course, repeat. So hopefully this summer, after we go through this whole process, uh, we'll start seeing and judging uh, the fruits of, of this whole process and then decide what we're gonna do next as the Catholic community uh, around climate issues. All right, so let's see, I'm trying to change my slide. Thanks, I got help with that. Okay, great. Uh, so here's just my uh, local example of what we're planning to do here in the Diocese of Joliet. Um, so the seeing part, uh, which 
I've been, I've, you know, I've been kind of in this conversation of the Catholic Climate Project for the past couple of months, so I've had a little more time. So over the past couple of months, I have been uh, assembling a team of people to help me on the diocesan level. Uh, to you know, so these are people from parishes and young adult groups and schools. Um, who are going to be like my local core team who are going to help me uh, get all of these projects off the ground um, during the months of April and May. And so our first meeting is actually going to be in a few weeks. Our first like meeting of our whole group together. I've had one on one meetings and conversations with everybody uh, on my team already. Um, I must say that I did fail a little bit on the intergenerational aspect. Most of the people on my committee are young adults. Um, and so, I mean, hopefully we'll get some more people to join who are who are who will make it a little more intergenerational. Um, sweet. And so, as I mentioned, the Lenten season is coming up, and so we're going to take that time to really, uh, as we're like preparing for uh, all of the events that will happen, to really take time to reflect um, and also start uh, preparing our parishioners and people in our schools uh, to get ready for uh, April and May. Um, so a couple of ideas that we have and that we're likely going to do. Um, I have a group of young adults who are really, who have some connections to uh, Catholic schools that are at their parishes. And so they are helping me. We picked a couple of pilot schools. Um, to do on Fridays, you know, so in solidarity with like Fridays for the future, uh, they are gonna do their morning announcements and their morning announcements. They're going to include just snippets of La Dato Si during Lit um, and, you know, just like a little Lenten reflection on La Dato Si um, for the students on Friday specifically. Um, also during Lit, it's time for confirmation. And so there are usually a whole bunch of confirmation retreats that happen during that time. Uh, and I have been invited to speak at a couple of them. And so during uh, these confirmation retreats and with uh, all the people who are preparing for confirmation, I will have the opportunity to share about La that's a C and the work that we're planning for April and May um, to hopefully get our uh, brand new Catholics uh, interested and involved. Um, so if you have you know, if you're at a parish, try try to inquire about uh, what's happening at conf for their confirmation formation and see if you can speak or have a speaker uh, speak to them. Um, yeah, and then we're also going to encourage parishes to reread La Dato Si during Lent, as well as, uh, you know, when everybody's in the fasting mindset, uh, encourage people to fast from things that are harmful to the earth. Um, so those are just things we are, like our preliminary things that we're going to do leading up to this uh, project in our diocese, um, yeah, to encourage participation. And then, um, it's time for action. And so uh, one thing that we are doing in the Diocese of Joliet is that we are co-leaders of the local uh, climate march and rally. We are doing ours on the Saturday after Earth Day, so it's April 25th, uh, but we've had a couple planning meetings already. We are co-leading it with uh, all of the universities in the area. Uh, it's actually starting at the University of St. Francis in Joliet. Um, and ending there. And we are also partnering with immigration organizations and workers' rights organizations and really focusing on all of those intersections of climate change and other social injustices. And so we are uh, one of the co-leaders of that. And actually, the diocese has been hosting all of the planning meetings here in our pastoral center, which is a really nice way to bring people into the work that we do here. Um, and it's also it's been like a nice evangelizing uh, well, experience as well. Um, let's see. Yep. Okay. So then we're also going to be encouraging parishes to do energy audits. Um, and we'll be sending that out from our office, um, in partnership with our building the properties office. Um, and we actually have a couple of, uh, presentations set up at different pastoral council meetings at some of our parishes about energy audits and the importance of being aware of our energy use at our, in our diocesan and, uh,
parish buildings. Um, let's see. Um, and then we have a bunch of garden plantings uh, planned out for April and May. Several of our parishes, including our cathedral, uh, have nice community gardens. And so we're really going to highlight the work of, of those gardens during this season. Um, and then we have an annual environmental lobby day on the state level that also falls within, um, it's usually at the end of April or early May, we don't have the date set yet, but we are going to encourage our parishioners to uh, attend that as well at our state capitol. Um, and then it will be time to celebrate. So at the end of May, we're going to have a celebration here uh, to celebrate Laudato Si and then also uh, lay out some ideas for the future uh, in our diocese. Cool. Next slide. Thank you. All right, and so I just pulled out some uh, other examples and ideas to share with you, but it's by no means a whole list. And once we have our website uh, up and going, definitely look there because we will have a whole bunch of resources there for your use. Um, so of course, prayer reflection and preparing our hearts for this moment. Um, so uh, incorporate this project into liturgies. So these are links to uh, homily helps from the Catholic Climate Covenant. And then also uh, the United States Conference of Catholic Bishops also has a section on their website of different prayers that could be used as well. Uh, as we just had this whole conversation about the importance of intergenerational involvement, um, the climate issue is huge and a way that it will be effective and our work will be effective, effective is if it's also interfaith. So reach out to other faith leaders in your area. We are with our climate march that we're involved with. Uh, we are partnering with other uh, faith leaders as well in the area to help co-lead that. And then, uh, yeah, just metanoia, our change of heart uh, individually. So it's not just for climate change deniers. We, you know, hope that they uh, have a conversion of heart as well. But it's all of our responsibility to take uh, take on little actions individually to also uh, change our ways uh, to help uh, the climate and nature. Um, and then we're encouraging retreats and then also using the season. So in April and May, uh, during the height of this project, it will still be the Easter season. So consider that as well as you're preparing. Um, next slide, thank you. All right, so different events that could be done. Uh, as I mentioned, we're encouraging parishes to reread Laudato Si. It was released five years ago. Uh, I know a lot of people who read it right away when it came out, but maybe haven't touched it since then. And so uh, just a little refresher and uh, re-energizer. So hoping that as many people will reread the encyclical. Um, Education in schools, obviously, really important. Um, this link here goes to a resource for high school students. And it's a whole lot of that see curriculum. Uh, we'll also include that on our website uh, once it's uh, up and going. Um, youth ministry presentations. The way that we're doing it here is um, we have like a team of young adults, just two guys, two girls, um, who you know, are available to go out to youth ministry groups and do presentations. Uh, we only have a couple scheduled right now, but we're hoping that um, we can get in the door more. Um, energy efficiency projects. So the Catholic Climate Covenant has um, uh, Catholic energies are a good resource to uh, help your institutions, your parishes, your schools, uh, you know, really evaluate your energy use and what you can do to take steps towards energy efficiency. Um, then there's like the hands-on stuff, like really hands-on stuff, like planting trees, planting uh, plants and vegetables, and then trash cleanups. We highly recommend those. And then of course, marching and rallying and striking. And then advocacy. Um, this link here for the advocacy training is with the Ignatian Solidarity Network. Um, we highly recommend reaching out to your elected officials on the federal, state, and the very local level as well. Um, 
on the federal level, a big thing that the USCCB and the Catholic Climate Covenant are focusing on is the Energy Innovation and Carbon Dividend Act. So this link uh, goes to an action alert for that and has a bit of a background. I recommend also reaching out to your state Catholic conferences, if your state has one of those, and see what they are supporting on the state level. Um, and then also, you know, advocate at your parishes, schools, and on the diocesan level. Start start those conversations about, um, you know, what are we doing regarding La Data C at our parish? What uh, can we do to address our energy use at our parish or recycling at our parish? And then, of course, letters to the editor are always effective. Um, and the Catholic Climate Covenant has a how-to uh, toolkit on how to write a letter to the editor. Um, great, we can go to the next one. Yeah, so we will have a website, the Catholic Climate Project website. We will also have social media pages. Uh, those are not launched yet, but they will be soon. And I'm sure we can answer any questions about those during the Q&A portion. But just definitely keep your eyes uh, open and not peeled for those. Um, yeah, and then I just like, brought out some highlights of like different things you could do, but uh, this moment calls for creativity. Um, so yeah, be creative in what you do on your local levels as well. Um, we could go to Q&A now. Kayla, go ahead and keep your screen up there. And Lauren, you joined us back. Um, I'm gonna invite Jose back up as well. Uh, so that we can address some of these questions and make sure we've covered all the bases here. Um, so thanks for joining us again, Jose. And uh, Kayla, great job presenting on, on all that information. I know we got lots of questions in here uh, based on your presentation. So one of the first questions here uh, is about what, what should we do uh, if our the local church hasn't really uh, gotten behind uh, these climate issues yet. And that I think you touched on that, but I think it's worth re repeating here, uh, Kayla. Uh, what is our approach here in, in terms of advocacy um, it, within the church itself? And uh, Jose, Lauren, Kayla, anybody want to take a stab at Well, we've had lots of conversations about this, but I want to let you answer that question. Kayla, do you want to yeah. take <laughs> Sure. Um, I mean, yeah, that's always the question. Um, so, I mean, what I recommend is, I mean, depending on if you want to address it on the diocesan level, the local level at your parish, um, you figure out who the decision makers are. And so as I gave an example, um, that we have a couple of presentations set up at uh, pastoral councils at parishes, um, there is like a lot of work leading up to get those presentations. And so, um, and it's easy, it's best to not do it alone. And so just use them as an example. There's one parish who, you know, a bunch of people started, uh, you know, realizing that they're interested in uh, environmental things and kind of formed their own group. They didn't really become an official group at the parish. That took some time, but now they are like an official ministry at the parish. Um, and then over the years, they've been engaging in conversations with the pastor and they have run into a lot of roadblocks with that. But uh, I think their persistence and consistency has been uh, effective. And now they have in a couple of weeks have a presentation with their pastoral council. So um, I guess I recommend reaching out to, well, first assembling your team. That's always most effective. If it's just one person from the parish, asking for this, you might not be listened to, but if there are several people who are expressing interest, um, you might be able to get some more attention. And so, um, yeah, I would say try to reach out to your pastoral council or definitely reach out to your pastor, have those conversations. Um, and if you're still running into roadblocks, um, I don't know, pray for conversions of hearts as well. And then also see what's going on at other parishes in the area or other groups. And maybe once momentum starts building, eventually uh, 
you know, doors will start opening in your own local community as well. Right, and I would say don't hesitate to reach out to us as well. Uh, we can be we can provide resources and answer questions, and uh, you know, if we if we need to uh, help you or work on your behalf, we're happy to do so in that way as well. So uh, the other piece of it though, is that this is not only a Catholic climate project where we're doing external advocacy in terms of uh, governmental advocacy work, but we want this to be an internal Catholic climate project as well, where we really are reaching uh, across uh, traditional lines and uh, interest groups. And that's why that's a critical piece of all of what we're doing here to make sure that we are uh, working towards a unity as a Catholic community across the country uh, on climate issues. And so this is a, there's an internal advocacy piece here as well uh, to, to help, as Kayla has been saying, to convert hearts and minds around climate issues. So th this is both external, uh, and we'll we'll talk about that as with this next question here around Earth Day and Laudato C5. But there's an internal piece as well to the Catholic community um, and making sure that we are building unity with ourselves. So uh, that next question is: Let's talk a little bit, uh, Kayla, Lauren, uh, Jose, about Earth Day 50 and Laudato C5, and why those anniversaries are so important, and what we're looking for with those anniversaries. Uh, Lauren, do you want to take that question? Sure, I'd be happy to. Um, let me know if I'm going a little off what, what you had envisioned answering-wise, but um, I very much think that this is a moment in time that, that we as a community um, can capitalize on having both of these anniversaries so close to one another. We are able to join in communion with those who are celebrating the 50th anniversary at First Day, that we are able to support, encourage, and collaborate with those efforts. But then also, too, we're able to share um, what, what Pope Francis had shared, and we're able to use his wisdom to address Ladanto C, and they're a month apart from each other. The fact that both of these are happening so close together, both anniversaries are happening so close together, we feel that this is a really unique moment in time, and we're really excited that this is an opportunity to not only share with maybe a more secular or other denominations or other religions who will be celebrating with Earth Day, but then also to, to bring our unified Catholic voice with the Dante C as well. Um, so I, is that kind of what you were hoping for, Nick? Uh, yeah, that's great. Um, Kayla, Jose, do you have anything <laughs> to add? No, not this time. No, okay. Uh, there's a Lauren that's perfect and um, yeah it's a great it's always great when we get to celebrate anniversaries um, whether you know that's for married couples celebrating anniversaries uh, for, or for big documents like Laudato Si and, and Earth Day so we're always up for a good party right and I think that that's what a big part of what this can be um, as well as we move into the spring. Uh, th there's a great question here who would uh, someone in ministry, a youth minister or uh, someone on a parish staff, who do they contact uh, to get more information about being involved in the Catholic Climate Project and how can they be involved? Uh, Jose, do you have an answer for that one? Um, yes, thank you. Um, so as, as Kayla mentioned, we will be uh, having a, um, a website up which will house all of the activities um, that any, most any, um, member of the Catholic community might be interested in. For example, uh, social act and action directors and dioceses, uh, to parochial school students, to college students, to college administrators, um, to uh, people working on the ground and in parishes. Um, so with these, with these resources, um, people will be able to figure out where they can go uh, and what avenues that they can take to work, for example, uh, with your young adult ministry office and to access um, young adults. Um, and I, and I, I wanna take a moment to take a step back here and, and I'm sorry, I, I should have answered, uh, more answered the question with, around these anniversaries. Um, we see 2020 as an incredibly critical year and many climate advocates do as well. Um, 
And we know that the Vatican is very supportive of the 50th anniversary of Earth Day, as well as the fifth anniversary of Laudato C5. And they are soon to be coming out with a big announcement on those celebrations and those programs. In addition, this project is also going to lift up the season of creation in the fall. And so these three particular moments create opportunities for us to act as a climate community, to lift up all of your activities um, into this big tent um, that will be um, shown through our website, through social media, um, and in other avenues. And in addition, we want to be able to work and encounter you on a one-to-one -one basis. So if you do have questions with regard to how can I engage with the Catholic youth in my parish, or how can I engage with the college administration on my campus, we will have um, specific experts from our team um, to do so. Um, so thank you. Great. Thanks, Jose. Uh, we are getting lots of great questions, and we have more than we're going to be able to get to even in the next 20 minutes. But we're going to do our best to get through a lot of these. Uh, but there's a, a question I want to throw out here because it's come up a couple of times, and that is about our tie to the uh, global Catholic climate uh, movement. And so, Jose, if you can come back on. Uh, I'm gonna throw this one to you first. What is the connection between the global Catholic climate movement um, and what we're doing with this Catholic climate project and the Catholic climate covenant? How does all that tie together? I think there's some people that's probably not been part of this before and they know that there's all these different pieces out there in this orbit, but how do these, these um, different pieces tie together? Thank you, Nick. Um, I, I'm well. One of the reasons I am so excited about this opportunity um, is that we are engaging across the church, um, from institutions as established as the U.S. Conference of Catholic Bishops Youth and Young Adult Ministry Office, down to those who are, are have already been very climate committed, um, like the Global Catholic Climate Movement, um, and we have members of our team, of our core team, from all of, from those organizations that I mentioned, as well as Bon Secure Corps Youth and Young Adult Ministry, as well as the Diocese of Joliet, um, and from other organizations. So it is bringing all of the perspectives within our church and from the various positions in which our church are in and bringing us together. And the metaphor I use is that there are so many Catholic stars in the galaxy with regard to climate action. And what the project is trying to do is bring us all together so that when we lift ourselves up in these key moments, we look like a Catholic galaxy that shines across the US Catholic Church as, as representing our care for creation, reflecting not just what Pope Francis has been saying, but what Pope John Paul II has been saying and Pope Emeritus Benedict has been saying that we are responding to our care for creation our responsibility to the poor and to the children. So this broad array of, uh, of organizations is also reflected by a broad array of activities in this way, where we're seeking, as uh, Caleb and Lauren eloquently mentioned, metanoia, a change of heart, um, that we are moving our hearts and those around us towards uh, a greater understanding and appreciation for care for creation um, in any way, shape, or form, um, in spirit, in word, and in action. Um, so this big tent um, is we are also providing, as I mentioned earlier, opportunities um, to, for us to engage with you on this vast array of activities where are, wherever you are. I hope, does that answer the question, Nick? Yeah, that's great. And so there are there's all these different layers to this, um, but we're just happy that you're involved now. Um, and I'm sure that the different constellation, the way they all fit together um, uh, will become more clear as the more you get involved in all of these activities. Uh, but know that we are making sure that we are working across all of those different um, uh, lines and organizations and, and different um, movements of the, in the church. Um, Kayla and Lauren, I've got a, another question for you. We have a, a couple of questions in here that are asking about recruitment 
in terms of how do you put together some of your teams and how are how, what have you what are your strategies for getting people involved and especially Lauren I'm going to ask you also how do you make sure how can we bridge some of the gaps between existing groups that may have older participants uh, who want to engage younger participants with their groups uh, what are some of the strategies and outreach that you can do to make to bridge some of those gaps as well so Kayla in terms of just recruiting in general what what are your recruitment strategies for getting people involved and and Lauren how do we how do we bridge gaps gener intergenerationally I could go first um so timing here to be honest was like pretty great because our so the Laudato Si ministries is a very new ministry in the diocese of joliet it was just started a couple months ago um we're super excited about it um but because of that and the announcement of this new ministry all of these people started coming out of the woodworks like people we didn't know before and so i was kind of in a different situation because of you know, this new announcement in our diocese and this recent excitement. Um, so that's how I was able to find so many uh, people that I haven't uh, had interaction with before. Um, but I also have had, like, t I've taken time to um, meet with young adult groups or meet with parishes that already have either, like, a peace and justice committee already or, like, a like service committee, um, like Christian outreach, and then just go and visit them and speak and uh, teach them a little bit about La Dato Si and how it like fits into the work they're already doing. Um, so that was part of it. Um, so like taking that time to do one-on-ones to go out to uh, the places where people are and uh, see where there's overlap with people. Um, and then I've relied a lot on like young adults and I am a young adult. So that is helpful because they're just people I've met over the years of living in this area. Um, so, yeah, see where you overlap with people and other ministries that you could overlap with and uh, take the time to do those one on ones to help them see the vision. I think I would. I think I would agree with Kayla, um, and I think that goes into bridging gaps as well. The more I've shared about the Catholic Climate Project, the more I've shared my excitement and shared the passions and desires of this group, that, that there is such an excitement around this moment in time, and the more I've talked about it, the more people I've seen and the more stories I've heard from those who want to be involved but didn't know where to go. Um, and the, or or had started something but potentially hit roadblocks or um, had something going um, but were willing partners to collaborate with. And so I think the more that we um, talk about these things, the more that we share, and our hope is to have a presence online as well for those as well. Our hope is to have a strong presence on social media accounts, um, to broadcast via podcast, to, to spread this word far and wide, because I think that's really how you, you bridge gaps is through relationships and through um, time spent in, in getting to know where someone else is coming from, to getting to know their excitement and, and where they see need in this world. Um, so I think, yeah, I, I love what you shared, Kayla, because um, I completely agree. I think it just takes us going out, maybe it's outside your comfort zone, but going outside of that and, and sharing um, why you feel called to this moment. Yeah, that's great. Thanks, Lauren. Thanks, Kayla. Uh, we have a bunch of questions here that are around resource development and uh, what we can offer as well. So, Kayla, I know you had a lot of uh, different ideas up there, um, but there's a lot of questions here around are we going to be developing resources or how are we sharing resources, um, either educational resources or presentations or um, you know the different uh slideshows and things like that uh what what is your thought in terms of how we've gone about uh collecting those kind of things and and what we're doing uh to share and give people resources and kind of crowdsource for for what we're doing here for this project i think jose might be the best to answer this, this sure one. jose you want to get back on here and um sure Caught me uh, answering a question on text. 
Sure. Um, yeah, we will uh, through our website, and I apologize that it's not up. We had hoped to get it up uh, today, but we, we do need to do some work, and that is in particular to be able to direct you to the resources that you need tailored to your particular circumstances. So for example, Carmelite NGO has created a Laudato Si curriculum for high schools, as well as Healing Earth has, has um, from the Jesuits has also done so. So all of these resources we hope to tailor to you. And one of the ones I also wanted to emphasize, and we spoke about this earlier, um, the question of how do I reach out to my bishop or to my pastor, um, you know, recognizing that he or she, he may not be um, receptive, there are ways in which you can engage and dialogue um, with with them uh, in order to to move you know to move them one step closer towards this part of uh, our Catholic ministry. Um, so that's kind of a stay tuned, and 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 God willing, we will have this website up by the end of the month, and we will send you that link, and hopefully it will be as user user friendly as possible. Um, and we also welcome any advice that you have. Um, we will also have, for example, events that are coming up um, that you can engage in either in your local area or nationally um, so that you stay tuned to some of the exciting developments. Yeah. I would Good. also add, Go ahead, I, I would also add that um, if you yourself have educational resources, information, if you have done something like this in the past, if you have guides, how-to guides, um, or if you're willing to create anything, please send it our way. Um, we would love to highlight those efforts um, and share those across this, um, ac across the Catholic Climate Project. Um, so if you have any, we also would love to house those for you and, and share those. Yep, that's exactly right. So uh, thank you. Um, we have some other questions here um, about uh, making sure that we're doing outreach uh, in, in various languages and to different cultural communities. I know that's something that uh, is uh, very close to my heart and something that we've um, we promised to make sure is part of this. Uh, we want to, we know that uh, over half of youth and young adults that are Catholic in this country are, are Hispanic. And so we we know that you can't have a youth led movement um, without including uh, that uh, piece of piece of the um, the community. And so uh, that's a, a part of what we're doing. Um, so I just want to address that question here as well. Uh, and we will do our best to have as many things as we can um, in English and Spanish. Uh, and we are, you know, um, have worked. Uh, in the youth and young adult ministry world uh, very closely with the Pastoral Juvenile Hispana community and will continue to do so. Um, so there are uh, just a few more minutes left here. I wanna make sure, uh, pause Kayla, Lauren, uh, was there anything that now that we we're almost an hour in um, that we haven't said that you want to make sure that we share with our audience today? Any uh, final thoughts or uh, comments? I'll let Kayla go first, and then uh, Lauren and Jose, you can wrap up. Um, let's see. Uh, I'm just really excited. <laughs> and um, yeah, I think this moment in the world and in history um, and just our country, um, you know, and it just that it's all lining up with these like anniversaries and these celebrations. It's just like a really exciting moment. Um, some of my like climate activist friends are like starting to get like really like worn down and like aren't as hopeful. But I think uh, with our faith, like Catholicism, uh, a big part of that is hope. And so um, like the fact that we as a community are approaching it in a hopeful way, even though it's a hard issue, uh, and you know there hasn't been a lot of wins, um, that uh, yeah, it's just a really exciting moment, and I'm uh, just grateful that we're all doing it together. Good, Lauren. I think for me the biggest, for me the largest takeaway from this, and what I hope everyone takes from this hour we spent together, is that this is an invitation. Um, we are inviting you into this project um, and we 
are asking for a call to action. And as Kayla said, like we're hopeful and we're excited. Um, so we're hoping, our, our, our greatest hope is that this goes beyond a like on social media and it turns into um, a desire within everyone, a desire within everyone um, to do something about this issue. And Jose? Um, I have a lot to say. <laughs> I'll try. I'm sure you do. <laughs> um, uh, as Pope Francis and uh, St. Paul, John Paul II, and um, as uh, Pope Emeritus Benedict have said, um, uh, this climate crisis is first and foremost a moral and a spiritual crisis. And we need to be grounded in our Catholic faith. Um, in our love of neighbor, our love of brother and sister, and our love of enemy to really help transform our nation and, and to move the needle of our nation's moral compass towards goodness, towards the common good, and only our spiritual leanings and only the strength of our theology um, and our faith is going to carry us and our nation towards this end. Um, and so we can be leaders together. We can be leaders in bringing together our Catholic Church as one of the most influential actors um, to, to, to make the change that we need. And that's why this is, is so exciting. Um, and one particular dimension I wanted to lift up uh, and to give gratitude for is for the religious orders and especially for the sisters who have been leading this movement within our church for decades, uh, through their awareness, through their prayers, through their actions. They are living the gospel in so many ways, and especially for care for creation. Um, and as we talk, and as Kayla has mentioned, um, the, the challenges that we all face in this, in this struggle uh, and the spiritual challenges that we have, there is a great spiritual strength that we can all draw upon that our consecrated give to us. And we can minister to those who are suffering. And then we can spiritually strengthen all of us in lifting up this, which is uh, the eternal power of God um, and his creation. Um, so I, I implore all of us to continue in our spiritual grounding, to follow the path that is so well reflected in St. Francis's prayer, to be true rays of light in this darkness um, and at this moment. Um, so I thank you for, for joining us in community today. Thank you, Jose. Uh, there is a, a last question here about where do people send resources? Uh, well, please send those resources either to Paz or Jose at uh, the Catholic Climate Covenant. Uh, you can find their contact information on the Catholic Climate Covenant uh, website. And the links that you have today or the emails that you're getting about this webinar would uh, come from them. There is another webinar coming up. That was another question that was asked is, are we going to have more of these? Yes, there will be more webinars. Uh, there'll be another one uh, coming up very quickly next month uh, that will focus again on uh, the work of young people and how they are leading this movement and why they are leading this movement. Uh, and so we will get that information out to you as soon as we are able. But uh, of course, for more information, please always email us anytime at info at catholicclimatecovenant.org or fill out the form for more information. We already have about 200 people who are uh, I want to be involved in different ways in this project and we are so grateful if you are part of if you're someone who's already signed up um, and said that you want to be involved thank you for signing up and being involved and know that we will be in touch soon with different ways that you can uh, move to action on this catholic climate project so uh, we and we want more 200 is just a start for us uh, so if you haven't signed up yet and you want to be involved and you want more information and you want to move to action and move your communities to action, uh, please make sure to fill out that form uh, so we can be in touch with you and continue to mobilize our Catholic community for Catholic uh, climate action. Um, Jose and Paz, did you have any final uh, announcements um, that I missed there? Um, no, this is pause. I'm going to sort of jump in. Um, the only thing is that folks have been asking if this is recorded, and yes, we did record the webinar. It will be in your inboxes probably sometime tomorrow afternoon. It will also contain a link 
um, to the PowerPoint presentation. So you will have access to all this info. Okay, great. And let's just close with a, a quick glory be to the Father. Oh, oh, Jose, go ahead. You had another one? I just wanted to say that uh, it is, there's a strong possibility that there may be funding for activities that you may wish to engage in on the parish level, parochial schools, uh, environmental clubs at colleges and universities. So stay, stay tuned for that opportunity so that we can uh, work together with you. Thank you. Great. And I just want to thank our, our presenters today. Thank you, Lauren. Thank you, Jose. Thank you, Kayla, for your, um, for your passion, for your energy, for your wisdom in this project. And as we conclude, let's just say glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Thank you all, and uh, enjoy. Uh, please pass along this recording to whoever you can, uh, and have a great day.